In my last video I told the story of how I got my first Chakuhachi, which included as a side plot how I got a book for learning as well. I had planned to talk about books for a while now, so this seems a good point to actually do it. And because much Chakuhachi playing can really only be taught by demonstration and imitation, I thought just one video on books is enough. But when I browsed through the books I collected over the years, I thought maybe it's better to spread this out a bit more, so today I'll be talking about this book by John Kaiser Neptune and if books are a good idea in general. So over the years I've collected a few books on shakuhachi playing, but I must confess that I hardly used them and mostly got them for teaching because if a student already has made a start with the book it's a bit easier to just continue with that for a while. And I found that the scores for the beginner's pieces are actually often quite useful. The way I learned shakuhachi was by taking lessons very early on and getting the scores of pieces from my teachers. But I did use this one for the first three or four months of playing. But before we start with the video, I've been told that the best way to get new subscribers is to make it a game in the middle of a video. So let's do this. I won't continue this video until you have hit the subscribe button. What? You already are subscribed? Do I believe you? Yes, of course I believe you. But you will have to find another person to subscribe before I continue. I'm waiting. I'll just practice a bit. While you're at it, please like the video and don't forget to comment down below. Still waiting. Did this actually work? Did you subscribe? Did you like the video? I don't know, maybe I'll see in the statistics later on. Anyway, okay, so on to the book. The book is by John Kaiser Neptune. It's simply titled Shakuhachi. The book was published in 1978, so you may ask, is it still up to date? Another one of my infamously stupid jokes. Well, apart from a few comments on the then current situation of the shakuhachi world, nothing really has changed, at least not in the fundamental of shakuhachi playing. And of course, that's no surprise, considering that the shakuhachi in its current form has basically not changed for more than a century. Additionally, the music that is most commonly played on the shakuhachi, so honkyoku, sankyoku and minyo, so the Japanese traditional folk music, has not undergone major changes either. One aspect about the book I like very much is that it is printed on quite thick paper, which means it can withstand some rough uses during practice. There is a table of contents, of course, but I'll give you a quick outline of the book. The first 35 pages give a general introduction to shakuhachi and the techniques that are used in playing. There is a brief history of the instrument and the two main schools, kinko and tozan. He then describes tone production, some basics of playing, the notation and basic techniques. All this is done in a concise and easy to understand manner. Neptune is trained in the tozan tradition, so naturally the book uses tozan conventions. There are some photos and illustrations which are well made, but I personally always have difficulty translating such depictions into what to actually do, not just in this book, but generally, so this is not meant as a criticism. By the way, there is an excellent picture of the author playing in the front. I really like the picture. He looks very different now. <laughs> The second half of the book contains 33 pieces, from very simple introductory note-finding pieces via some typical folk songs, Sakura Sakura and Koju no Tsuki for example, and of course the Japanese national anthem Kimigayo. So this is how these pages look. There is also one of Neptune's own compositions in these pieces. They are given first in Toza notation, written in the traditional way from top right to bottom left, and then after that also in staff notation. From what I remember using the book myself, I very much liked the exercises and the way they progressively introduced new elements of notation and technique. For me, they were very effective in learning what symbols correspond to which fingering. There are also recordings available of the pieces in the book. 
but I don't have them. And I think they were originally repeased on cassette tape and not as far as I know in any different format since then. So if you don't have a cassette player, you may be out of luck. The recordings would definitely help a lot to figure out the exact rhythms of the exercises, because even though I read staff notation and the Tozan way of notating rhythm is based on staff notation, it took me quite a while to decipher these initially. But in retrospect, that actually was a very good practice too, I think. Finally, there is an excellent fingering chart in the back. This fingering chart here. In fact, this is still widely used as a reference. And if you're interested in that, it is, for example, available from the website of the European Shakuhachi Society. One aspect that I should maybe comment on is that although I initially learned from this book, I soon changed to the Kinko school, or to be more precise, to KSK. But I must say that there are no fundamental differences. The biggest ones were the notation, mainly the rhythm notation and some of the symbols, and a few fingerings for repeating notes, for example, for repeating row. In Tozan, it is the standard to use the second finger, but in KSK, we usually use the first one. So, I still like this book a lot and probably would suggest it to my own students if it were not for the fact that I'm in the other school. <laughs> Now on to the question of whether shakuhachi books are a good idea in the first place. Maybe you've heard the maxim that writing about music is like dancing about architecture. By the way, the origins of the saying is shrouded in the mists of the past. So if anybody tells you this person said it, it's very unclear who actually came up with this. And I don't actually think this saying is completely true. Quite a few things can be learned from books. One obvious aspect would be the history of the instrument. However, when it comes to the actual playing, books are not enough to get a proper understanding of how to actually do it. To give just one example, the pitch of Tsumeri. It is lower than the corresponding western pitch, but the frequency is actually not exactly defined. And it also depends a bit on the musical context. A western half step would be... But the Tsumeri pitch is... Another aspect of this is that shakuhachi playing technique varies quite a bit between players, probably more so than in other instruments. Just consider the location and way the flute is placed on the chin. The best position is hugely dependent on the anatomy of the player. For example, for many it is best to have the flute off-center, for some it is better to have them a bit to the left or for some to the right. Or maybe you get a better tone if you just slightly rotate the flute. It really depends very much on the shape of your lips. The next question, are videos better than books? Well, you can hear the sound and see the person playing, but you're not getting any feedback on your playing either. And the same goes for listening to recordings, using mirrors or filming yourself. They work well and by all means you should use all these techniques. But you still need some person or mechanism that points you in the right direction. So what's the best way to get feedback? Yes, I know I repeat myself, the best source of feedback is an experienced player or teacher, of course. In this context, I'd like to add that I really like the word sensei because literally it just means born before. So it simply is somebody who is a bit ahead on the path to mastery, but everybody's walking on the same path. Just a person who has been on the path a bit longer may be able to give you a few tips. And of course, it goes without saying that nobody is ever getting to the finish line on this path. Do you have any experiences with learning shakuhachi from a book? Am I completely off the mark with my somewhat skeptical view? Please let me know in the comments. And I'm really curious to hear because this is one of the few aspects of shakuhachi playing where I actually do have quite a strong opinion. So if I'm wrong, please tell me. <laughs> and now that we know all about this book, you can watch the exciting story of how I got it. I tell it in this video over here. I'm actually serious for a change. It's a very cool story. So go and watch this one. <laughs> there's also there's also one of Neptune's own, the Japanese national anthem and the Japanese national...